Welcome to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Got another good show lined up for you this week, and I know you'll think so after viewing it. It's a clip show, our best of. For all the guests we've had, we've got some fantastic interviews. If you've missed them the first time they aired, we're going to rerun them for you tonight. And also, if you have seen them, enjoy them again. So thanks for tuning in. I know you'll enjoy it. And here we go with Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. His hands were hard and stained with dirt from breaking ground. If a ship ever comes in, it's coming in and rolls, he'll make it go from sun up to sun down. He knows how to make Mother Nature come around with a saddle full of faith in fields full of love. He'll give it hell and with a little bit from Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through. And the same holds true here. From our fair upfront pricing to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive Family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see, I'm going to get right to it on the screen with me. It's a full screen. Uh, to my left, your viewer right, Tristan Wirfs, Super Bowl champion. Let's get that out of the way first. Former Iowa Hawkeye, former Mount Vernon Mustang, and current Tampa Bay Buccaneer and Super Bowl champion, and the guy that made it all happen at the bottom of the screen, our buddy Ike Budker. Ike out of Cedar Falls High School, Cedar Falls Tiger, former Iowa Hawkeye, and now Buffalo Bill. So first and foremost, Ike, since you originated all this and you're back for week two with me on video, liked it so much you came back. Uh, but secondly, thank you so much for joining us. But most importantly, thanks for, for being back yourself, but bringing Tristan with you. With you. So how you doing, Ike? Absolutely. I'm doing great. And thanks for having me, Dave. My pleasure. Well, Tristan, you're here. Man, I'll tell you, there's so much to get to. And look at that smile. Super Bowl champion. Have you gotten used to that yet? I mean, it's it's still kind of crazy. It don't it don't feel real yet, you know. It's um, it's just been incredible. Man, congratulations! Huge, huge deal. State of Iowa, all of Eastern Iowa, where you're from, Mount Vernon, Cedar Rapids area. All very proud of you. Ike came a game away from playing in the Super Bowl. What would have that been like, Ike? You and Tristan would have been on both on offensive sides of the ball. But man, look at look 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 at Tristan laughing. What would that have been like, Ike? I texted him the night before, and I'm like, let's get it done. <laughs> Worst held up his end of the deal, but we just fell a little short. Hopefully next year. Well, Tristan, before we get to Tom Brady, the Super Bowl, the championship, obviously you're here to talk about – we're here to talk with you first. Oh, yeah, by the way, you play with a – Moderately famous quarterback, and uh, you're protecting him. And, and uh, you know, in, in his own right, uh, Josh Allen doing a great job with the Bills and Ike Butker. But before we get to that, I talked to Ike last week on radio, and you're, you're going to be kind enough to join me on WMT. Uh, it aired last week, and, and WMT and KXIC, you and Ike are going to do the radio version. So, uh, viewers, please go to DaveOHaraSports.com for all the past radio shows and videos that I've had with Ike, now Tristan, and TV and, and, and radio as well. But Tristan, Ike told me, he said, when, what a freak. That's all I've heard about you off the field. When, you, when you're playing football, as Ike's smiling here, he was, I said, tell me about Tristan Wirfs. He said, Dave, a freak. We all knew he was ready for the NFL when he walked on a campus at Iowa. Now tell me off the air, now tell me on the air what you said when I said that to you, Tristan. Um, <laughs> I was like, well, I might have had a little baby fat saw me when I walked on campus. Um, but, yeah, it's – you know, I kind of took Miller's wing when I, you know, when I, right up right when I got on campus. Um, but I think I was, I think I was still a little bit of a little kid, you know, right when I got on campus. 
So, Ike, you had a, a problem with your Achilles, as we talked about, in a senior year in that game against Iowa State, so game and a half in. But you got to beat your team, the Iowa Hawkeyes, beat your quarterback now, Josh Allen, when he was at Wyoming. But talk about that when Tristan, you, you guys were roommates when he came in as a freshman. You mentored this guy. You went through all the rigors of being an Iowa player. Talk about that for a little bit. And then, I, then Tristan, I, so be careful what you say here, Ike, because then Tristan's going to give me his version. Yeah, so, I mean, I just love how I always set that up in camp. I had great mentors when I was young. Uh, I roomed with Sheriff and C.J. Fedora. It's my first two years. So, I mean, what greater guys to look up to. So, I just learned so much from them and, you know, tried to carry that on as I got older and was, you know, a starter and playing. But Worst was just such a great guy and an easy guy to talk to, fun, and just you know, considered him a great friend from day one, which is not super common uh, freshman and a senior, mm -hmm. but he was, you know, mature. He, I mean, he can say he's goofy, but he's still goofy. <laughs> I'm still goofy. You know, we, we haven't really changed very much. So has he grown up and matured, you know, as everybody does? Yes. But just coming in, into college, he had a great mindset and, you know, everything about him, I knew he was going to be successful if he just stayed at it. And he did. And I, I, one quick story. I remember walking with his mom after a game when I was hurt. So I, I randomly just ran into her um, on the side of the road. I just remember telling her, like, just stay on him because he'll he'll go as far as he wants to go. And this was when I was, yeah, a senior. So he was a freshman. And, I mean, it wasn't – I wasn't, like, a wizard predicting that. I mean, it was pretty obvious. But, uh, you know, he took advantage and – so proud and so happy of for him. Tristan, your thoughts? It, it's funny because, like, I still have all these memories from my freshman year, like, or reported. Um, so me and Ike were, like, uh, our locker were next to each other, and he sent me a Twitter DM. Um, and he just sent me a picture of our two lockers next to each other. And I tell you what, I freaked out. I was so excited. I, I showed my mom the picture. Um, you know, and, and kind of from, you know, like I said, he kind of took me under his wing. Um you know, I remember, in, yeah, we were roommates in, in, in camp and then at practice, like, every day I was just, like, watching what he did, trying to just, like, you know, just kind of emulate that. And, and um, I never forget, like, when, that Iowa State game, when he went went down, it was I, – I, I, I was dressed, but I um, didn't play. But I remember watching it happen, and my stomach dropped to my feet. I was like, oh, no. I was like, I go in. Because it was a close – I think it was, it was a close game. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're going to put me in and I'm going to like lose us the game, but <laughs> I was scared, but they, they didn't end up doing that. But um, even after that, like the whole rest of the year, like I was on the, you know, he'd be on the sidelines at, at practice, you know, and he, I'd come off. He'd be like, all right, what'd you see? You know, he's like, well, you know, what, what, what rush did they give you? Stuff like that. Just always kind of, kind of helped me out the whole time. Um, and so it was, it was just awesome. All right, I got to ask you, Tristan. I've waited this long into the interview, and Ike and I talked about this last week on the air and off the air. You're prolific on video, jumping out of a pool, uh, your weight room workouts with the team surrounding you, and you breaking records in the workout room. Talk about your experience. You know, Ike and I talked last week a little bit about Chris Doyle, and obviously that has changed since Ike and I talked the week before. And he, you know, left Iowa with all that controversy. We're not going to get into that. That's another time for another show, and that's not to minimize what other guys went through. You know, Ike became another person, grew into another person. You already came in, developed. Iowa, Ike was a, a tight end quarterback or a tight end at Iowa, and they put 100 pounds on him. You were ready to rock and roll. What was your experience like? And then you see, you said you still talk to Chris Doyle now and what happened to him in Jacksonville. He took the job, then he resigned because of all the backlash. But don't want to get into that specifically, but talk about your experience. when you said you still talk to Coach Doyle and Brian Ferentz and Kirk Ferentz. What was that like for you to be in the room with those guys? Yeah, so I, mean, I, love, I love Coach Doyle to death. Um, and and I, didn't, I didn't necessarily have, like, put on, a, like, I put on 100 pounds there. Um, I kind of just... I kind of just like change, you know, he just completely changed me pretty much. Um, like body wise. I mean, like I said, I had like a bunch of baby fat on me still and everything. And then, um, you know, I think, I think if you look at pictures from like my, my freshman year and then to when I left my junior year, like I, I, you know, he just completely, completely changed, you know, changed everything, just developed me like crazy. Um, 
and I was, you know, I was all for it. And I, you know, I have so many stories of Coach Joe. You know, there'd be days where we, you know, we can talk about the hand clean, you know. So there'd be days where, you know, it wouldn't be even a max out day. I'd just be hand cleaning and he'd be like, you know, we we'd have three sets of three sets of four or whatever. I'd be done and he'd be like, you know, put uh, you know, he'd be told me to put another plate on. I'd be like, okay, I'd do it. I'd be like, all right, put a twenty. All right. And all these guys were like halfway, three quarter done with their lifts. I'm still cleaning, you know, he just, cause he just like, he knew, he knew what I could do. Like, I didn't know, but he just wanted, I think he wanted me to know. He'd be like, you think you can do it. And especially, especially when I was like leaning up, leading up to the breaking the record, you know, he's like, he'd tell me to put some on and I'd be like, okay, you know, and I would do it. And it was funny. He always told me, he's like, do it as fast as you can. Or try and try and do it as fast mm-hmm. as you can. And it was weird. I have some videos of it on my phone and I was like, looking back, I was like, how the, how did I do that? You know, but it's just, I, I had so much trust in him and I knew he wasn't going to steer me wrong or, you know, do anything to get me hurt. Uh, Cause he knew, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, but it's just, you know, it's awesome. I love coach Doyle. And yeah, he, yeah, I kind of, owe. I don't want all this, you know, he, 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 you know, put all this on. Um, but yeah, I, I love him. Well, I appreciate your candor, Annette, and we wish him uh, the best, and it's great to hear you guys talk about your experience at Iowa in that way. It wasn't for everybody, but it was for you, and I greatly appreciate that. So let's do this. Ike, you and I talked about this last week, so Tristan, we're putting you on the chopping block again. So not only are you a rookie going into the NFL, okay, so the draft day didn't go as particularly planned, but then, boom, all of a sudden you're at the Buccaneers. You're there. Oh, by the way, Tom Brady's there. Yes, Josh Allen's a great quarterback, young quarterback for the Bills, not taking anything away from him, but this is Tom Blanken Brady. So he shows up. So I got to know, Tristan, your numbers are prolific in offensive. You know, and Ike tweeted this out, your buddy, the other day. You had 499 snaps in the NFL this year. Would you have one sack and one holding penalty? Am I right on that, Ike? Was that the numbers that you put out for, for Tristan? It was more than that, but yeah. yeah. I don't remember the exact numbers, but. And you graded out as high as anybody else in the Super Bowl, with almost 92% at your position, 91.7. So obviously the pressure didn't get to you. You know, as an offensive lineman, I talked about it last week. The only time you get your name mentioned besides being on this show is if you give up a sack or get caught for holding. Did you have any pressure at all with, with hey, that's Tom Brady. If you give up a sack, he ends his career. It's Tristan Wurst behind that caused that. What, what are your thoughts on that? I tell you what, every damn near every snap, that's what I was thinking. You know, <laughs> I, you know it, I remember, okay, so the phone call, I remember getting the phone call on draft night and BA said, he's like, he's like, hey, baby, he's like, you ready to protect Tom? You got to love Bruce Arians, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you ready to protect Tom Brady? And I was like, I was like, I don't know if I am right now, but I was like, I'll get there, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Um, but yeah, you know, Tom, Tom Brady, you know, he's one of the, he's probably the best quarterback to ever, ever play the game. So I was like, you know. And I like, I love Tom, but you know, he's, he's 43 and I was like, I don't want to get him hit. So I just <laughs> did everything I could to, to keep his Jersey clean on Sundays. Um, but it's like, I didn't, I think I put a lot more pressure on myself um, mm-hmm. than I think than anyone else, you know, like then I had, like I put more pressure on myself personally than I think other people were putting pressure on me um, just cause I didn't, you know, I didn't want to come in and, and not live up to expectations or anything like that. I just, um, I was just trying to go out there and, and keep Tom safe. You know, <laughs> that, that's, that was pretty much my whole mindset going into game. And who could blame you? And I got to ask you, Ike, because you and I are just laughing. We're just going, you know, rolling our eyes going, man. But I, I do have to say this. we got just a few minutes left with you two. And now that I got you on camera and I can hold your feet to the fire on this, is there any way I can have you guys back again in the next week or two? Because we've already chewed up a segment. I'm going a little extra. Is that okay for both of you at some point in time in the near future, Tristan, Ike? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, some, uh, awesome. Sweet, but we'll get it there. Good, because uh, I'll have Jeff Horner take it out on you guys. You all were little kids when Jeff was playing basketball at Iowa, so you're taking him and Jeff Settle's time away. and They're bigger than me, so I'll leave it up to them to straighten it out with YouTube. I, I think you'll be fine. But, like, but Tristan, when you mentioned B.A. as Bruce Arians, your head coach, and a guy like Brady. So as we close out here, I'm going to talk to you first, Ike, about what it's like being around a leader like Josh Allen. And then, Tristan, I want to hear your thoughts on Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, you know, obviously he won Super Bowls. Nobody liked Brady. Ten appearances in Super Bowls. It was 21 years. Seven wins as a Super Bowl champion. 
won, or five is an MVP. By the way, I got to repeat it. Congratulations, you're a Super Bowl champion, Tristan. But what's that like for you, Josh, or being with Josh Allen, Ike, a young guy on the rise, hoping to be Tom Brady? What does he bring to your huddle and your practice facility and locker room, Josh Allen? I think so many similarities to what you see from Tom, um, just in a younger, you know, shell. Uh, he's got a lot more physical tools than maybe Brady has, and then his mental growth just through the three years I've been with him has been incredible. So, you know, he looks at like, at a guy like Tom Brady and sees how he mentally handles the game, and then he just, you know, gains more of that every year as his physical. You know, he's still got a long time with his physical body being great, but, you know, he's probably 26, 27. That's, you know, like almost a, yeah, a teenager's life away from – from Tom Brady. So, you know, I think all quarterbacks look up to a guy like Tom and it's fun just talking to Josh about what he's learned his first, you know, three years in the NFL and what he takes away from guys like that, watching a guy like Tom on tape. All right, Tristan, what's Tom terrific bring to the table? What do you glean from a leader like that? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty crazy just the way that he like kind of controls practice. Um, you know, everyone just, it's like he's a general, you know, everyone just gravitates towards him and like they listen, you know, they listen. If he wants to do, you know, you know, sometimes you want to have a higher tempo in practice, you know, get things moving faster. It's like, you know, he'll, he'll say it and it, ha you know, it happens like that. And I think the same thing, you know, just being around him, like in meetings or, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll say something in meetings, you know, to the wide receivers, you know, a way he wants to have something run or cause he's, you know, he's seen everything there is to see, you know, yeah. for offenses. But then in games, you know, he just – it's like a flip, you know, he switches. Because he's super cool to talk to, like, in the locker room, like, outside, you know, off the field. And, you know, when he's on the field, like, he like he means business. Just, he, you know, he he's super intense, you know, super locked in. Um, but it's just been awesome to be able to be in the huddle with him and kind of – I just try and be a sponge, you know, and just yeah. absorb as much as I can. Yeah. You don't say, hey, you might want to try this, Tom. Yeah, you kind of uh, be led. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> both of you just cracked up when I said that. Guys, I can't believe the time goes so quickly. I want extended time. I thank you both so much. We're going to be on the radio again. Uh, viewers, go to DaveOHaraSports.com to hear all of Tristan and Ike and me. And Tristan and Ike, we're going to rearrange this and have us all back together again very soon. There he is. Mr. Iowa right there, Super Bowl champion Tristan Wirtz with the Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Ike Butker at the bottom of the screen. Ike with the Buffalo Bills. Going to be in that Super Bowl soon. Guys, thank you both so much, and we'll catch up soon, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. My pleasure. Please stay tuned. We'll close out the show. Back with more Dave O'Hara Sports in just a few moments. Hawkeye with me. When you're a farmer, there's a lot of things you can't control. But there is a way to give your soybeans an early advantage. Mershman Seed Soybean Seed Treatment featuring Trepidity ST. An independent analysis has proven faster and more even emergence every time. Just look at the Mershman difference. Give your crop the boost it needs for a uniform stand. For the best yields, grow with us. Mershman Seeds. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Farming makes a positive difference in my life. I love to take care of the yards and the flowers in the garden, but I also like the opportunity that I have now that I can get in the combine and help when they need that. During the fall, one of the main things that I take care of is hauling green to the elevator or hauling it here onto the farm and getting it in the bins. Women in general just have a, more opportunities that they can show their strengths today on the farm. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. And as I'm pointing at the screen, you see my buddy Jeff Horner joining me as always. Jeff into year three, and I'm getting ready to wrap up year three very successfully. So uh, with the Division II Truman State Bulldogs, and uh, good to talk some Iowa Hawkeyes with Jeff, obviously, and Iowa Hawkeye basketball. A lot of history, landmarks being, and records being broken, and soon to be broken. Jeff and I have talked about in the past, and we'll talk about it again. But Jeff, first and foremost, as always, my friend, thanks for joining us. Interesting how the National media has the respect for the Big Ten with Michigan or Ohio State losing that tight game to Michigan this last weekend. 
top five stays the same when you, or excuse me, the top, yeah, top five, and you've got uh, uh, Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, Ohio State, and then Illinois. Three of the top five are Big Ten teams. You put Iowa in there at number nine now. What a rogues gallery. What a schedule. Hawkeyes with big victories the last uh, week or so since we've talked to you. And then they've got upcoming. By the time the viewers see this, Michigan on Thursday night at Michigan. You've played at Chrysler Arena. You know what that's like. And then, of course, Ohio State on Sunday on national TV on the road after Ohio State uh, beat the Hawks in a tough one where the Hawks had that game in hand, let it slip away. Ohio State has beaten Iowa now once, so Hawks got to get a revenge game. And then, of course, closing out the season, we'll talk about this next week, the makeup game with Nebraska at Carver-Hawkeye Arena, and then to close out the regular season at home against Wisconsin after beating Wisconsin last week. So give me your takeaway on what's ahead for the Hawks. Yeah, you know, obviously two big games coming up with Michigan and Ohio State, um, you know, ranked three and, and four in the country. Um, you know, they're definitely going to find out uh, more of what they're made of. Um, you know, obviously they haven't played Michigan yet, so, you know, everybody's going to be tuning in to watch that. But I think, you know, it's going to be one of those things where, you know, you have a chance to move up with, with Big Ten seating, tournament seating, and then you also have a chance to, to move up maybe with NCAA seating and see where, where that takes you. So I think those two games are extremely important for Iowa to, you know, not only get the confidence, confidence that they can play with top five teams in the country, but uh, move their seeds up as well. That's going to be some fun viewing. So Jeff, uh, the obvious 800 pound elephant in the room, Luca Garza breaks the national or the Iowa Hawkeye scoring record all time over uh, Roy Marlboro. God rest Roy's soul, rest in peace, my friend. But we got Jordan Bohannon, appropriately enough, gave the assist to Luca Garza to break the record on that basket. Speaking of Jordan Bohannon, only three away from breaking your record. You're, he's at 6'10", you're at 612 career. Records are made to be broken, but you gotta be happy about that. These Hawks playing well this year. And as you told me on radio yesterday, your name has been at the top of the record books and many other offensive, meaningful offensive statistical categories in Iowa basketball history. So still pretty cool your record is held for the last 15 years. So how you feeling with Jordan ready to break that record of yours? Yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy for him. Um, you know, I think the assist record means, you know, a, a lot because I, I keep telling people, you know, it's, it's, you know, giving your teammates, you know, baskets or helping give your teammates baskets. And, um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing when you're a basketball player is the joy and seeing others succeed. Um, if you're a true teammate and you have true chemistry on your team and our team definitely had that. So, um, you know, I know he's excited about it and, and I texted him or I sent him a message on, on Twitter, you know, just, saying, hey, cheering for you down here and hope things go well and, uh, you know, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, couldn't, wouldn't want to have it any, any other way. A guy that's, you know, done it right, um, you know, stayed out of trouble, that type of thing. And just, you know, even though he gets going a little bit on Twitter, kind of like I do sometimes, um, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, he's a person and, and he like he, he's going to defend himself, you know. So, um, you know, he definitely um, has a lot of, of me and him and I have, you know, some me and him, that, that type of thing, and uh, just super happy for him. Yeah, and you should be, and, and I'm great to hear that and glad you are because we all are as fans for you, for him, for the whole program. And so what a uh, monumental uh, record being broken, you know, Luca Garza over, um, you know, 2,000 points for his career. The intriguing thing I want to mention this last footnote before we say our goodbyes to you for this week, you, Andre Woolridge, or no, excuse me, you, Dean Oliver, and Jordan Bohannon, the only Hawkeyes in history to average or to have 100 assists four seasons in a row. That's something else. That's otherworldly as well. And that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, like I said, I think, uh, you know, we care more about, you know, what our teammates are getting. That's mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we're all on successful teams as well. So, um, you know, I'm happy for him. And, and hopefully, you know, he keeps on going and this, this uh, Hawkeye team can make a run. That's right. Consistency as always, Jeff. Thank you so much. He's Jeff Horner, former Iowa Hawkeye basketball playing great still again at the top or near the top of most meaningful offensive statistical categories in Iowa basketball history, now into year three at Truman State University, number three in the country in Division Two, and looking to move on into the conference tournament and to go into nationals. Again, Jeff, congratulations on being back-to-back -back regular season conference champions in the GLVC, the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Congratulations on that again, and we'll catch up the next week, my friend. Sounds good, Dave. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks again for tuning in to our clip show with Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. The best of the best. Man, we've got some great interviews and some great folks joining us. Uh, so I'm glad you got to see that for the first time or watch it again for a second or third time. Love to have you viewing the show. And thanks again to our advertisers and sponsors who make this show possible. And thanks to you for tuning in. So for Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, that's all from me. Thanks to all of you.